Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved sisters and brothers, you might wonder why I started with sisters. Well, I can tell you today's discussion is going to be a discussion that will perhaps generate a lot of interest. It's about nail polish, mashallah. Nail polish. I've been asked by so many people about nail polish and a halal nail polish or a permeable nail polish and what is its ruling now obviously there are companies that are dedicated to doing things they want to sell their product and some of them might come up with certain things uh, they may know they may not know it may be okay it may not be okay so there lately a few years ago some companies came up with a nail polish concept that is supposed to be compliant compliant meaning perhaps halal that's the word they used as well and uh, several other companies have come up with it as well they say it is permeable why is the word permeable used and why is it so important let me explain we as muslims need to wash ourselves correctly if we want to be considered upon the level of purity to be able to read or fulfill our prayer or salah and also in order to be able to be protected from uh, the devil and so on, if you're in a condition known as wudu, you have greater protection. If you're in a condition known as ghusl, you have a greater protection. It's a type of ablution. So people ask, do you know what, uh, should we be in the condition of wudu all the time? The answer is, well, it's good to do that. It's good to be upon that condition because you be protected from the devil. Yes, indeed. But then people say, you know what, uh, I like to use my nail polish. I'm not going to talk today about the whole makeup and so on. That's a topic on its own. Uh, let's strike a balance. You know, we don't want to actually be people who condemn everyone. And we don't want to be people who are so relaxed that we actually uh, distance ourselves from Allah without knowing or sometimes even knowingly. Let's be balanced people. So people say we want to use nail polish. Uh, but then what do we do? So a lot of people who use the normal nail polish that's been around for years on end, they know that water doesn't go through that. So in order to be in the condition of wudu or ghusl, you would need water to go through right to the nail. Just like the film of uh, hair, uh, the film of hair dye on the hair, if it was not permeable, then the, hair, the water wouldn't go through to the hair. Uh, just like that, there is the nail polish if the water doesn't go right down to that bottom of the nail then the wudu is not actually valid so now what would happen is uh, people would put nail polish on they would go for their function those who fear allah those who are concerned about their salah those who really want to be protected from jinn and from uh, the evil eye and from satan and so on uh, they would be concerned about their wudu so they would make the wudu they would be in the condition of ablution and then they would wear the makeup and they would hold that wudu in order for them to be able to pray the prayers that they would need to before the end of the day now if you need to pass wind and you're actually holding it in not only is it detested from an islamic perspective it is unhealthy from a medical perspective and it is wrong actually you know, to hold your wind in and knowing that you really desperately need to pass that wind. Uh, so to be very fair, holding it in is actually an option for some, but it's not a healthy option, nor is it considered OK. It's actually makru, which means it's detested to hold in. But some people, their nail polish is so valuable for them, they don't mind holding it in. Your eyes become red because... I wonder where that gas goes. But anyway, it must be going in up somewhere because, you know, warm air rises. So it gets in some way. It gives you heartburn. It gives you not only heartburn, but the gastric pains. And you think you're dying of a heart attack. But you know what? Just don't use that nail polish or just pass the wind and your heart attack will stop. Subhanallah. Anyway, my beloved sisters and brothers, I tell you what. What we need to know is those are the people who are concerned about their prayers. They're holding their wudu. I'm telling you, don't do that. You know what? There is another category of people who just don't use that nail polish because they use henna or they use something else, you know, that they know is, per is permeable, not permeable or permeable or not is besides the point. But they know they're not going to actually uh, compromise their relationship with Allah. They want to fulfill their salah, do the wudu properly. They want to pass wind when needed, obviously respectfully. Respectfully meaning not in public, 
But at the same time, my dearest sisters and mothers and brothers and fathers, listen to this one. Now they came with some uh, nail polish they said is permeable. So I didn't comment about it because I don't know. I mean, I didn't test it. I didn't check it out. I, I, I didn't test it. But people started saying, oh, it's permeable. Use it. Have you tested it? Have you checked it? Do you know? Do you not know? I was quiet because obviously I'm not qualified to address a matter. What if it is permeable? But what if it isn't permeable? So I received messages from people who worked for the company telling me it is not permeable. It's just a gimmick. It is not. They did the coffee test and another test and this test and that test. And you know what? People working in the company told me it was a lie. And they said, you know what? We work in the company. We've marketed the thing and we do market it. But actually, I, I, what should I do when I know that it's wrong? And I told them, look, if you know something, then you have to speak according to what you know. Don't lie to the people. However, Let's still give them the benefit of the doubt. We don't know. I still don't know. Recently, there's another company that some of my uh, friends and even some family members and others have told me, no, uh, it's permeable. You've got to put less than two quotes and then you have to wash it under the water uh, about six, seven times, you know, and you've got to. And, and then sometimes it gets stuck on the side of the nails. And, you know, they say then it becomes permeable and not. I have one answer. My beloved sisters, my beloved mothers, those of you who love nail polish, I want to ask you a simple question. I don't know whether it is permeable or not. I will never be able to know. You don't know either. Trust me, it's very difficult to know. I want to ask you a question. You really love Allah? Do you really want your relationship with Allah to be there? Do you really want to fulfill your salah on time? Do you want to be protected from the jinn and the devil and so on by being in the condition of wudu or by being clean and so on? Well, I want to tell you there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says, Inna al bayyin wa inna al bayyin. You know, it's a hadith of al numan ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim. He says, halal is very clear, haram is very clear. And in the middle, there are certain things that are not clear to many people. You won't know them. In the middle, there is a little gray area. So halal is clear, haram is clear. In the middle, there is a gray area that a lot of people may not know. So some would know, some will not know. Maybe a lot might not know. The hadith says, فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدِ اسْتَبْرَأَ لِدِينِهِ وَعِلْضِهِ What a powerful wording. Whoever stays away from the gray area has protected themselves and their deen completely. And whoever falls in it was willing to fall into haram. So they've fallen into haram. That's what the hadith says. وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِي الشُّبُهَاتِ وَقَعَ فِي الحرام. And the hadith gives another long example that I'm not going to go into. I want to tell you, one inch of paint on your nails, is that more important than your link with Allah? If it is, well, you've chosen. And if Allah is more important than one inch of paint on your nails, then you know what? Use an alternative or use something that you can remove totally and gone. But you don't need to risk your relationship with Allah in order to achieve one inch of paint on your nails. I hope you get what I'm saying. So I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not saying that it is or it isn't permeable. I'm saying it is something that is debated heavily. I, if I was a person who needed to do something that would compromise my relationship with Allah or even risk it, I'm risking my relationship with Allah. I put both things together. It's too big a risk for such a small little thing. Just have clean, beautiful, lovely nails and that's it. Go ahead and love yourself. Today, we're taught that you need to cover your nails. You need to cover your hands. You need to cover your lips. You need to cover your nose. You need to cover your face. You need to cover your eyes. You need to cover your pupils and your iris. You need to cover, you need to do your hair, you need to do your face, you need to do your this, you need to do your that, you need to actually do your shoulders, you need to do your, 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 your breasts because they don't show properly, you need to add or subtract from that, you need to do your backside, you need to do everything, everything, we are not happy with what Allah has given us, we want to do it to the degree, and it's not wrong to do certain things to a certain level, but we do it to the degree that we don't mind compromising the relationship with the one who gave you the life and those nails and everything else, so I am just saying, you know what, guys, do yourself a favor. If it is something that you're unsure about, just leave it. What are you losing? Just quit it. Are you ready to, to actually compromise your relationship with Allah just for an inch? Subhanallah. So even if you're using a permeable one, take it off completely to make the wudu. That would be my piece of advice. Because on the day of judgment, it will be too late. You cannot catch the people of the company to say, you guys lied to us. But no, Allah said, don't you know there's a gray area? It's debated. It's heavily debated. 
Are you sure you want to risk your life? I've seen people who actually, who actually have suffered with a lot of jinn and so many other problems and ayn and what have you because they're not in the condition of wudu they're not even bothered they're not even in the condition of ghusl you know they've had a major janaba according to the islamic terminology they have this impurity and they're not even bothered about it and they get affected so badly and they don't know why well you don't have a connection with allah develop your connection start off with you know don't try and impress the dunya impress allah Show off to Allah, say, oh Allah, I love this. I love it so much. But you know what? I'm not going to use it. I'm going to quit it. You know why? Because I don't want to risk my relationship with you, oh Allah. Imagine if I, if, I, if I read Salah for five years with this whatever on. You know, it can either be acceptable or it might not be acceptable. Guess what's going to happen? Imagine if it's not acceptable. It's, going to, it's too big a risk. Imagine if people give you, you, you're gathering 50 pound notes every day, $50 notes every day at $100 note, $100 bills every day. And five years down the line, you've gathered a whole pile and you find out they were all fake. What happens? Wow, you're the fool. You should have found out from day one that, you know what, I'm actually risking this. Let me not gather these big, big notes. i rather gather something that I know I'm not compromising my, 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 the authenticity of it. This, this, what I'm telling you is even more. A lot of sisters will be upset with what I'm saying. But I trust me, my beloved sisters, it's only out of the love we have for you that we're sharing this with you. To say, you know what, you don't want to risk your relationship with Allah. Uh, if, if, you know, if there's something that's debated, just leave it. Leave it out. If they're saying it's permeable or not, consider it not permeable and move on. Finished. But if you're going to consider it permeable, you have actually taken on your shoulder a huge burden. And worse still, if you're going to promote that and you don't even know for sure 110%, then you're actually helping other people detach from Allah. And the little link that you have with Allah through purity, which is the most important aspect of Islam, is tahara. The Muslims pride themselves because they use water to wash their backsides. Allahu Akbar. It's a fact. We use water because... It makes you pure and clean. And you know, everything is pure. Islam is based on purity and tahara. The hadith says, you know, your purity is half of your faith. It's all about purity and keeping clean. And imagine that cleanliness is compromised because of one small droplet of paint. No way. Not at all. I'm not going to compromise my salah. I'm not going to compromise my link with Allah, my tahara, my cleanliness because of one inch of paint. If you would like to compromise it that's totally up to you may allah bless you all i hope this little video has helped you it's gonna create a controversy but remember i didn't condemn any company and i didn't say what they did was right or wrong i'm no one to comment on that i'm only here to tell you where there's a debate about something stay clean jazakumullah khair my brothers and sisters it's up to you what to do you know you know assalamu alaikum